I'm Femi Oke. Thanks for watching the stream. Today, the story of a US combat veteran struggling with PTSD who made a plan to bomb a mosque. You will not believe what happened next. His story is told in the short documentary, Stranger at the Gate. When I first saw him, I remember saying that there's something not right with this guy. It was a little scary. He seemed to be like a redneck. He was walking kind of fast, his head was kind of down, pacing back and forth. I was hoping for at least 200 or more dead, injured. You know, he thought he was doing the right thing. He was at war with Muslims in his mind. When I tell people this story, they tell me that they don't believe me. My dad calls my mom the Mother Teresa of the Muslim community, and it's definitely true. I invited him over for dinner. I couldn't help it except to make him feel from my heart that he is welcome. I could never in a million years repay this community what they've given me. So we're going on a journey from hate to acceptance via kindness. Joining us to talk about the film, Bibi Barami, president of the Islamic Center of Muncie in Indiana. Also in Muncie, Indiana, Richard Matt McKinney. He's a life coach, anti-hate activist and public speaker. Richard Matt McKinney, can I call you Mac? Absolutely. All right, welcome, Mac. And in New York, Joshua Seftel, who directed the documentary. Sister Vivi, Mac, Joshua, so great to have you here. We have a YouTube audience who are standing by with their comments, ready to ask you questions. So there you go, YouTube audience. You can jump in any time. Uh, we start, Mac, with uh, a situation where you are planning to bomb a mosque that's nearby to you. Why? Um, <clears throat> over the years, I had developed a hatred uh, for Islam, Muslims. Um, it had, it had uh, basically just built and built over time to where I, the only way that I saw of making any kind of concession on this was to eliminate as many of them as I could. That's the, the, the vocabulary of, of somebody who sees other people as something different. When you say them, it's like those people, not anything to do with you. In the military, the way you could make sense of the killing was told to you by a high up official, like, Mac, this is how you have to think about it. And I want to share that moment in the documentary because it helps us understand what was Mac even thinking? Let's have a look. I was in the military for a long time, around 25 years. Towards the end of my military career, I was a totally different person. The fact of being involved in so many deaths over years, it was a crazy time, man. I, I don't even know. I probably would have been committed if they would have actually known the way I was acting. One time I had a discussion with a higher ranking person about coping. He looked at me straight in the eye. He says, Mac, you're on the range, you're shooting at a paper target. As long as you can look at them as anything but human, you won't have any problems. I said, oh, okay, that makes sense, yeah, yeah. And that's what I did. Sister Bibi, do you remember the first time you met Mac? What were your first impressions? Uh, thank you. Uh, when I first met Mac, I mean, as I say, well, he looked scary and concerned. But in spite of that, I respectfully welcomed him and uh, with kindness and respect and still understood as he was a human. Uh -huh. And as we have, that's how my memories, I know it's been a while, that's a uh, basic memory that I remember. Right. Scar <laughs> scar scary dude, but, but welcomed with kindness. Uh, Mac, what scary, were you dude. Scary, dude. <laughs> scary dude. Scary dude. Scary <laughs> dude. Scary dude, Mac, what were you doing in the mosque? I mean, this was part of the plan, right? Well, actually, me being in the mosque was not part of the plan. Ah. Um, in order to 
I, I, I wanted tangible evidence. I, I knew what I believed to be true, to be facts. The thing was is that I wanted to be able to, to show my daughter, even though she was going to lose her father, I wanted to show my daughter that, see, these people really are evil. Mm. And I went to the source. Yeah. Um, Joshua, as you were trying to piece this story together and tell this story through documentary form, that moment where we see Mac or we hear that Mac is casing the mosque, I mean, that is terrifying. And for a long part of the documentary, I think it's going to end in an awful way. Did you do that deliberately? Well, we we wanted to tell a story with um, with new kinds of heroes, uh -huh. heroes like like Bibi and like her her husband Saber, and we wanted to make a film that didn't just preach to the choir. And you know, so many films, so many documentaries, even ones that I've made. Uh, I think end up preaching to the choir and we wanted this film to be different. We wanted it to, we want this film to, we want people to watch this film who maybe need to watch this film, um, need this message, need to understand, have a better understanding of, of Muslims, have a better understanding of um, their own biases. And we, so we told the story in a way that was, is very gripping and draws you in and, has an uh, almost a true crime totally, element to it. Totally, totally. Uh, I'm thinking and, this is not going to end well, Joshua, for a long time. Yeah, I mean, we, we joke around that it's a it's a true crime yeah. story with without a crime. Uh, <laughs> the know. best kind. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, because it does that's have a beauty. A, <laughs> so, yes. Because you know, it, ha yeah. it has a happy ending. You know, it's a, sto it's a story about... Spoiler kindness, alert. Kindness prevails. But the best spoiler alert. Matt, you've been nodding all the way through this a little bit. Why, why are you nodding? Well, I mean, I totally agree with <laughs> yeah. Josh. Yeah, you know, yeah. he did... Him and his uh -huh. team did such a wonderful job at piecing this together. Um, and a lot of people have come up to me after they've watched it and they says, oh my gosh, I was shocked. Yeah. I thought it was going to end totally different. Plot twist. You know, and they had told me when they saw me being interviewed, they yeah. thought I was being interviewed. I was actually in prison. In prison. I thought you were in prison. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's yeah, quite exactly. a nice prison. How did Joshua get access to prison to talk to Mac. I was I was yes. slightly confused. I was like, wow. I yeah, I thought you, I thought you were in a lot of trouble. Sister Bibi, you're also nodding as Joshua was saying well, think, Harry wanting to tell the story. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think we were uh, extremely kind to him. We did not put him in jail. That's why he's not in jail. <laughs> we were totally blessed to be able to welcome him and comfort him and save his life. Oh my save goodness. Our life our community members' life. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the job done, well done by Joshua, uh, how when he presented the documentary to me to watch it. And I know when I did interview, I'll give you a little bit of background why I did it. But then when I truly watched it, I said, this is an interview. He wants to share the story. And I was like shocked that this is a real thing. And this is so professionally well done. And how he put these pieces together. Mm. And the story had happened in 2009. It was in this was he was working on it in 2021. It's been a while, mm -hmm. but very impressed how he did it. He intentionally did it with amazing message, and I think that's what I is very dear to my heart because of the message. How he shared this through documentary, and how he organized it in a short 30 minutes uh, film. Yeah, that so, was very so much impressive. packed into that. 30 minutes you feel like you've watched yeah. an entire feature film by the time you get to the end of it there's a lot of tension yeah. in the documentary and there's a part where i'm not yeah. spoiling anything for you because you have to watch it and it only yeah. takes 30 minutes to watch yeah. it there's a part where matt goes to the mosque because he is planning to do something awful um and he needs to tell his stepdaughter he needs proof to tell his stepdaughter like it's right these awful people are living amongst us, and I need to do something about it. Have a listen, have a look at this part of the film. I need to be able to show her proof. I need to be able to show the rest of the world proof. So I went to the 
Islamic Center to get the proof. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be with these people because if I walk inside this building, I might not come out. So I walk in the building and all of a sudden it's like, I felt my stomach tighten up, chest tighten up. I tried to keep my senses about me. I got very anxious. I didn't trust them. I, I, I considered myself somebody as a, 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 a future news story on Al Jazeera. By the end of the night, I figured they would have me in the basement with a sword to my throat. Well, Matt, you got your Al Jazeera moment, but thankfully it was a, it was a good one, right? Yeah, yes. But yes. walking into the masjid, walking into the mosque, that was the moment that changed your life and probably a lot of people's lives in the mosque because that was the beginning of how kindness overcomes hate. Tell exactly. us more. Yeah, tell us more. So, um, you know, when, it, when I went in there, I was very, you know, I felt very uneasy. Um, and uh, I was met with open arms, smiles, hellos, you know, uh, glad you could be here. And uh, then, you know, one of the brothers gave me, he come up to me and he handed me a Quran. And he says, read this, come back when you have questions. And I was like, man, they give me the, all the evidence and they're going to explain it to me. <laughs> it's like, this is great. Yeah, yeah. And, but but as I was piecing the two together between how I was being treated and what was in the Quran, my impression of Islam was the people who had been shooting at me. OK. And but when I came here and I started reading the scripture. And knowing how religion works to where you're supposed to live your life according to the scriptures as closely as you can. Well, I saw that in Muncie. I didn't see that overseas. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that obviously the people in Muncie are actually a truer representation of what Islam really is. And it, it, it changed my whole perspective, you know, and that's when I started understanding that mm -hmm. more, more about human beings and they, they make the decisions they make in the ways that they act simply driven by greed. Joshua, you're looking very thoughtful. Articulate those thoughts. Go ahead. Well, I think that when Mac went to the mosque, he, he had just had a big argument with his eight-year-old daughter. And, you know, she had yelled at him because he said something uh, Islamophobic. He said something negative about Muslims. And his eight-year-old daughter confronted him and said, like, what are you thinking? Like, what's wrong, what's wrong with you, Dad? And that's when he went to the mosque was in the wake of that argument because, um, you know, he wanted to make sure he was right, that he that his plan to bomb the mosque was the right thing to do. And this little eight-year-old had made him question his plans. And I think that when he went in there, his I think his guard was down a little bit. I think I think there was a tiny crack in his armor. There was a tiny, like, opening yeah. for love to come in. And when he met Bibi and Saber and Jomo and the other members of the mosque. And they were so nice to him and, and so kind and welcoming that it kind of blew his mind. Yeah. I think it, it, he didn't know what to think, but he started to think like, maybe I, maybe I am wrong. Maybe, yeah. maybe I, I've got this whole thing wrong. And it was this amazing moment where, you know, Bibi, um, through her kindness, I think started to change his mind and melt away the hatred that he had in his heart. And she didn't even know. Like, Bibi, you didn't know anything about what his plans were, no, right? No, I did not. Uh, as you know, I mean, I would do this to anyone. Uh, I was blessed in a family that uh, we always took care of strangers. My father also took care of uh, people uh, and the homeless. And when I came across anybody, because I had been refugee twice and taking care of a uh, a refugees and then my husband being a medical doctor working in his office experiencing treating these people you know we have dealt with all walks of life and we have comforted all kinds of people in, throughout our life and we have given them place in our home they have stayed with us for months and weeks 
to to before we let them go. And the same thing. That's why when I did this, it was a normal act for me to invite him over. And I think I'm sitting on the table where he was sitting with us having a dinner. And I think that also was part of a way of life for me. But it was a huge impact on Mac. And not just having welcomed him in the center and respectfully yeah. and then inviting him over to our house and share a meal with him and sit down and listen to his story. I don't think he had this kind of a respect and attention and being invited and listened to. I mean, that something impacted him a lot. And then obviously, continuously, that was not only that thing, and we also give him part of the leadership. When I asked him to be the president of the Islam Muslim Student Association, and he said, well, oh, Sister Bibi, I don't know what I'm doing. I said, no worry, I will help you. Bringing so, him, Sister giving him that Sister respect Vivi, I of going, leadership. Yes. Sister Bibi, I always go, what? How can he be head of the Munsi um, Mosque? How is that possible? Because what happened to you, Mac? There's, there's a little gap there between you going into the mosque being very unhappy with your Muslim neighbors and then you became what? Well, first of all, I became the president of the uh, Muslim Students Association okay. in, uh, at Ball, Ball State University here in Muncie. Wait, Mac, you, uh, skipped, and that it. Was, you skipped it. <laughs> you forgot to that? say that you, you yeah. became, you be, yeah. first you became Muslim. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, well, yeah. I was getting into it. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. You can't go, well, um, yeah, yeah, I became a Muslim. I, I would remind so, you, so. after eight weeks, he comes in and he's asking my husband and other people, yeah. I want to become Muslim. And my husband say, no, what are you talking about, Mac? <laughs> you know, you need to study more and get ready. Now I can let Mac talk about the rest. All right. Go ahead, Mac. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's an interesting story. So, so, I, to to even go back just a little bit, no one knew about this plan. About my everybody that knew me knew I hated Muslims, but nobody knew the extent of my hatred, and nobody knew that I was planning to do anything. Uh, my wife didn't even know until after the fact. She knew when the FBI showed up at the house. Now, I know that opened up a door, and we'll get back to that. But um, when I uh, went there, and, uh, and finally, after all my studying and my, my conversations and, and all, the, all the acquaintances, I, I was touched. I was touched by the Quran, and, and I, I, I had to be a Muslim. I, I just had to. And it was funny because I went into the mosque on a, on a Friday and for Juma, and I went up to Sabr, and there was the, another brother. The, Matt, I know you're showing off, but Juma, you went in for prayers, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was, so I, I went up to Sabr and another brother sure. uh, and says, hey, I want to take Shahada. And they both, it was funny because they both looked at me, and they both looked at each other. And they looked back at me, uh. and they said, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they said, you're not ready. You need to learn more, right? Right, right. And, I, and so I looked at them and said, well, don't we all have a lot to learn? Yeah. And they looked both, both of them looked back at each other, and both of them looked back at me, and they said, all right, come on. Say, <laughs> Joshua, Max, Sister Vivi, if this was a movie, it would be <laughs> unbelievable, the fact that it's real life. Is extraordinary. Earlier we spoke to Mustafa Baba. He's from the Afghan American Foundation. And there's a bigger message to this film, if there needed to be one. I don't think there needs to be one, but there is a bigger message. And Mustafa landed on that bigger message. Let's have a listen. Let's have a look. Kindness does change. Uh, I think kindness does change hatred to, to love, to community, to connection. Um, and specifically Stranger at the Gate uh, shows that in a really beautiful way. Um, and I think it, it, also, it also goes and challenges a lot of assumptions um, that many Americans may have about Islam and Muslims. Um, I think many Americans, quote unquote, knows uh, about Islam and knows about Muslims, but uh, they have never um, spent time and really get to know a Muslim uh, close up. I mean, Joshua, this is why you were drawn to make this documentary. 
because where we are, not just in America, but in the world <coughs> right now, how divided people are, and you experienced it as a young boy as well, not a Islamophobia, but Islam, Islamophobia, but you, <laughs> you experienced being um, hated because of your Jewish heritage, your Jewish background. So that's why you came to the film. That's what drew you to the film. What do you make of the reaction? I mean, the reason we wanted to tell this story is because we felt like this story is needed right now. We felt that, um, you know, as you mentioned, that this is a moment of great division in our country. And it's, you know, it's not often that we come across a story about um, a would-be hate crime that turns into a happy ending, that turns into love, that shows the power of kindness, that kindness, uh, that love conquers hate. Mm -hmm. And... I was so drawn to this story and to the actions of the, the congregants at the um, Islamic Center of Muncie, Bibi and Saber and Jomo and everybody, and what they did, the, the way they welcomed Mac into their congregation and the way that they treated him with kindness. And it, it literally saved lives. And I can't think of a better way to convey the the power of kindness yeah. than with this story. And it's something, it's something we, I think we can all learn from. It's, it's something we need to remember that being kind to others, especially people we don't know or people that we might have um, preconceived notions about uh, that, that can be incredibly powerful. Right. And I think that it's, it's a lesson we all need to remember right now as we sort of live in this time where, we don't really talk to, um, we don't always talk to people that have different opinions than we do. We sometimes don't talk to people who vote for a different political candidate than we, than we did. Yeah. And like, that's very troubling to me. And I think what BB has shown in, in, through her actions is the power of talking to, she didn't need to talk to Mac, you know, like she knew he was different than her. She was even scared of him. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> she also saw him as a human being. And I think that's just something we need to remember and to be, to be like BB, uh, you know, to like BB, remember I like the sound and, of that. Yeah. <laughs> and treat others, treat others as humans uh, and try to find that common ground. And that's what, that's what struck me so much mm -hmm. about um, the story and what BB and, and the congregants did in Muncie. So, Stranger yeah. at the Gate has been nominated for an Oscar, and I just want to show the moment where um, Joshua and his production team were waiting for the Oscar nominations to come through, and they were quite excited. Let's, let me just show you what it looked like. Here we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they were just waiting, and then you can tell the moment when they find out that they were nominated. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, also, one of the executive yes. producers of Stranger at the Gate is Malala Yousafzai, and she says, have a look here, to believe that people can change and to be willing to change ourselves is our best hope for a better world. I have spoken so much about this film. It's only 30 minutes and it's available right now. So I'm just going to click so you can see where you can see it. www.strangeratthegate.com and just below the title, watch the film here, and you can watch it, and I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. Now, if you know anything about Islam, you know that we are coming to the end of the holy month of Ramadan, and then there's an amazing party and festivities, and it's amazing and extraordinary. Um, I want to uh, find out what you would wish uh, your fellow Muslims around the world, in a sentence, Sister Bibi, and in a sentence, Matt. Sister Bibi, you first. <laughs> One sentence. I would like, I would like all my fellow uh, friends, human beings, families, Muslim brothers and sisters. Thank you. To uh, wish them a happy and peaceful holidays. Okay, and leave and some time for Mac. Uh, Mac, okay. your Eid message. Yes, uh, to all the Muslim brothers and sisters around the world, as, as well as the rest of humanity, peace, blessings and know that tomorrow is a chance to be better. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Sister Bibi. Thank you, Joshua. I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.